So for both of you now, we do get like the necessary broad strokes for your characters, but I can't help but to wonder, given where we find them in this film, did you develop any backstory that we can now feel kind of informing your performances and their decisions in the story that we see in the final feature? Um, yeah, sure. I think like a lot of the uh, kind of work that research that I did that I felt was relevant to the backstory was actually kind of in-depth research into West Point itself as an institution and working out what that institution represented in this time and how it affected the cadets that trained there and, and just the type of personalities they were kind of attempting to breed there, you know, and, and what their drives and motivations were. And once you kind of have an understanding of that, you it, it, it told me so much about the kind of uh, inner life and, and the pressures that, that Artemis may have been under, I think. I bet for you, Lucy. I guess mine was more local to the family and the, the home dynamic between all of them and trying to work out uh, Leah's trajectory towards, I mean, we find out very early on in the film that she's battling with this illness that very much defines how she is, but also therefore informs how she wants to be presented and how she tries to behave in public and around people versus with her family. And so it was trying to get to the origins of that and working out a kind of timeline trajectory in a more analytical way than I usually would. I think usually it's kind of uh, instinct or emotions based uh, backstory. And this was much more kind of technical, analytical timeline in order to then find out where we are just before the film starts and then let that inform the, the character's trajectory. Now, let's say I told you both that I was gonna brand this entire interview a spoiler interview <laughs> and, re and repose that question to you in terms of what they're really up to and why they're open to it and maybe how they found it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, then that becomes a much more invested version of that, of like when um, illness and confronting the constant threat of death turns into, I will do anything to mm. not have to face it, which turns into the extreme of bartering for your life and the dark, dark depths you're willing to go to in order to do that. And at the end of the day, I think that is a kind of justified fight to live, um, but it was working out when she started realizing that there was, an, there was a path to go down that she hadn't seen before and that she therefore kind of pulls her family in along as well and they're all they all become kind of complicit in this dark road. I could watch a whole prequel movie oh my God, about your characters and just seeing them come to this conclusion and trying to navigate the scenario. So because we're talking about spoilers, let's talk about that big ending set piece. First for that when you're looking at a script and you're preparing to shoot something like that, what is uh, something on the script that you kind of circle in red and you say like that beat or that particular part of the production is gonna be the most challenging for me. And then ultimately when you shot it, was that indeed the biggest challenge or did something else catch you by surprise? No, I think it was a challenge uh, to shoot. Uh, it took quite a while to to create because um, it's quite a big set piece in the kind of structure of the film. And of course it's the kind of um, emotional and, and, and uh, plot Climax, I suppose, and um, and you really, I think, when you're in a project like this, and just as an actor in general, you you feel a responsibility to kind of give the audience the the payoff that they deserve, the payoff that they've earned, you know. And um, I'm hoping that we did that. But it was also you look at those uh, those scenes in the script, and you can kind of try to realize them as much as you can in your imagination. But really, you don't get a sense of it until you're there on the mm. day, and you see all these elements come together in this really brilliant holistic kind of sense and you've got the you know the, the light and the costume and and, and the actors and and, um, and you've got the real fabric of the of the moment you know and that's when it becomes just like a thrill that's when it's like you're making a movie you know it's it's uh, just fun and um, as long as you can kind of stick to your task then it's something to be to be relished I suppose Speaking of that particular moment, one of, one of my favorite beats within that sequence is basically the end for both of your characters. And I was wondering if you could give us a little insight into like how it is and what kind of goals you have maybe for expressing the fact that they're making a really important internal decision and not explaining it to us via dialogue. Like the building is burning, she decides to stay there and keep going with the, with the ritual. He knows she's dead, but he decides to stay there anyway. So when you're performing beats like that without being able to explain those choices, what are some of your top priorities there? Mm, 
I think the joy is that you don't have to explain them in a way. So you really more earnestly get to live in it. And I mean, which is much easier when, as Harry was saying, the set piece is so alive. I mean, when you have real flames surrounding you, it's easier to get to that level of intensity. But by that point, I mean, we also shot that at the end of the filming schedule. So by that point, you're so entrenched in understanding the stakes for your character and how crucial it is that this moment, that this ritual is carried out, it is literally life and death. And when a person is cornered into that, I think you become so extreme and you are clutching at any possibility of hope. And I think that's the most poignant element of it, that even in these dire moments where the audience can see that all odds are against them, that there is that hope that keeps fueling all of those characters and and that's where you I think you do kind of you can find an, an emotional access to all of them you feel what you just described and it breaks my heart <laughs> how about for you Harry the choice to stay there yeah absolutely and I think um you know so much of that work when you don't have the dialogue to kind of uh, hang on to it can almost be more freeing and, and and better in a way because it becomes instinctive and it becomes situational and like Lucy says, when you have the fire around you, I mean, to be honest, it's probably like the only moment in the entire film where we were like warm, <laughs> which was which is quite a, quite a treat, really. Um, but yeah, uh, that is the kind of the the payoff of all the kind of ambiguity that we've tried to kind of construct in the movie up until that point. And and for us as individuals in, in, in our own work, you know, you've you've tried to layer these characters with um, with uh, purpose and motivation and make them multifaceted and, and interesting and complex. And for us, I think that uh, that desperation and that like foundation of love that they have was the, the thing that we really kind of pursued in the characters and the thing that mattered to us most and the thing that we kind of wanted to ultimately uh, put across. I got the wrap, so I'll finish with one last question that you won't be able to answer. You probably know exactly where I'm going with this. I'm sure someone else asked you today. The new Joker movie, in an effort to ask you a safer question about that, what is a, I guess, a creative itch that that movie, that unique sounding production is gonna let you scratch for the very first time? Um, listen, like, I, I, I can't really speak to a movie that, that hasn't uh, been made. Um, but from what I hear, the kind of, the, the creative team that seems to be involved in that project looks phenomenal. And um, I think it would be a, a dream of any actor to kind of, be part of that, and so, um, so yeah. It's a very smart answer right there. <laughs>